Really quite a lot of news coming out of Warhammer Community and Games Workshop today. They're giving out free Infernus Marines in their stores. Their Ogrim campaign has launched and we can see how you can submit results to that. And there's also going to be a new live preview happening on July the 1st, though 40k won't be at centre stage. Let's talk about the news and what it means. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today I thought we'd cover three minor but interesting bits of 40k associated news, a bunch of things that Games Workshops have released over the course of the day, though perhaps none of them so enormously exciting that they need their own video to cover, but I thought it would be good to do a roundup for those who are interested. The three things are that there's free and furnace marines on offer from Warhammer stores, if you happen to be passing by you can collect some free marines with flamethrowers, Plus Games Workshop have also unveiled their collectible coin for the month as well, one with a Terminator on it. It seems now they've officially launched their global Ogrim campaign, the one that decides whether or not Tyranids or Space Marines get their new reveals first. So I was kind of interested as to how you get involved with that and what the website looks like. And they have also announced a new online preview happening on July the 1st. This one's not going to be focused on Warhammer 40k, specifically even titled that so as not to disappoint people. I feel like there's at least a pretty reasonable chance of 40k relevant stuff turning up in Heresy, and given the Tyranid and Space Marine codexes, we do know that there's going to be at least some supporting stuff for 10th edition coming in the not too distant future. Let's take a look at these one by one then, and first up we've got the Free and Furnace Marines. These are part of Games Workshop's ongoing promotion of their Warhammer stores. They generally want people to come in and no doubt buy models of course, and while third party retailers might often have better discounts and be less expensive for buying things in bulk, Games Workshop do have a few little incentives to actually visit their actual official Warhammer shops, perhaps these free individual taster miniatures being one of the better ones. As with previous miniatures like this, apparently if you turn up to the store and they've still got some stock left, you will just be given one of these push-fit Infernus Marines from the Leviathan box, and apparently they're going to be available from the 15th of July. If you go in, then these guys are actually completely free. A lot of the time Games Workshop calls things free, but actually they're kind of not, and they're just an incentive for other purchases, but these ones are actual free taster miniatures, and that is a good feeling. In reality, with the Warhammer store's location, it's going to be a lot more relevant to certain people than others. I certainly wouldn't go driving hours to collect one free space marine that they might or might not have stock of, but certainly if you happen to be just passing a Warhammer shop, could be worth checking out if you want a random space marine. Even if you don't collect the faction, could be interesting enough just to have to paint up and try out some different styles on. I do think it's a little bit sad though that with their new point system, then random free miniatures like this are just a lot less valuable for gaming. If say you had your two different 5 man Infernus Marine squads from Leviathan, and then you wanted to add one more guy that you picked up from this promotion, it means that the points cost just don't really work out and you'd have to pay for the further 5, at least unless you're just playing casually and house ruling it that you can include one extra one and just pay the points per model cost that you can kind of work out from how much the squad is. If you are interested in picking up more of these, it's probably worth checking out eBay though at the moment. Now the Leviathan is actually in people's hands and people are selling off the bits they don't want to, things like this will be going really quite cheap. The Infernus Marines I think are nice enough, but probably aren't really the highlight of the box, and it means that you can get them for far lower than Games Workshop will no doubt sell them in the future. On eBay at the moment it looks like you can get 5 of them if you want them for £10 in the UK, or around about $18 in the US. The UK price was even including postage as well. So if you wanted a little squad of space marines with flamethrowers, it's not really that expensive to get your hands on them in certain places around the world without either buying the big leviathan box set or going hunting through warhammer stores. As well as that, one of the other incentives they have is the free coin that you get, but that is included in purchases so it isn't really free. This one's a rather stylish looking terminator, I think it's somewhere around 60 or 80 pounds that you have to spend in the UK, around about 80 to 100 dollars in the US I think. Next up, that campaign, The Battle for Ogrim, is now live. This one's Warhammer 40k's first global campaign event for really quite a while, and it's going to be running from today on the 26th to the 10th of July, around about two weeks to play your first games of 10th edition and submit them either for the Space Marines or the Tyranids side. The battle's set in Ogrim and the Formida system, which is a hive world that the Tyranids are trying to overrun, seems to be the setting for the Leviathan box set, and if you want to actually take part in it, it is actually tied to the Leviathan box set, to actually submit results to the campaign, you do need a code within the box set itself. That means it's a bit less relevant for some who either couldn't or didn't want to pick one up, but I feel like it's a fun little extra if you did want to start playing a first few games of Warhammer 40k, and this gives you a little bit more of a grander narrative to be a part of. It seems that you can access the results submission either via the Warhammer 40,000 webpage or the Warhammer community article from today that links you to the same place. 
you basically get a bunch of fluff around the whole invasion thing. You've got a place to submit the unique code, and then you choose either Space Marines or Tyranids for the victory of your battle. I believe that each code can only get used for one game, and then Games Workshop has taken the rather unusual step of the faction that wins this campaign overall will get their miniatures unveiled first next to their codex. Both the Tyranids and the Space Marine codexes are coming in the not too distant future, so I'm sure it's going to be a fairly decent amount of models and multi-build kits. It is only a reveal for what's coming first though, obviously they'll show off both of them by the time the codexes are actually getting out, so it doesn't sound like you actually get to receive the models sooner or anything like that, or get them released earlier, it's just literally when you find out about them. As it goes it seems like a harmless enough incentive, though in theory unless people are making effort to balance up their Leviathan box set, it does seem that the Space Marines have got a very hefty advantage in that. If you add up the points for both the Space Marine and the Tyranid side, it looks like there's around about an extra 150 points to the Marine side, as I talked about on a previous video in the channel. Just looking at the armies, they do look sort of balanced at first glance, particularly because the Tyranids have got big monsters and quite so many hordes, but in reality the Marines do have the skew of the power of the box, and most games that are played that are directly Tyranids versus Space Marines from Leviathan tend to win in a Space Marine win. Just something that's worth being aware of, as it's not really something that Games Workshop massively publicises themselves or anything. Finally, they've also announced this new reveal session that's going to be happening on July the 1st. This one's going to be happening at 2pm British time. That's to equate to around about 8 or 9am US time, or 11pm over in Australia. Games Workshop really are trying their best to manage people's expectations here, and they've specifically branded this one the Not Warhammer 40k preview. They're going to be showcasing things from Age of Sigma, Horus Heresy, Warcry The Old World, and Warhammer Underworlds. I feel in the past, even when they've done a fairly balanced preview and just done a little bit for 40k alongside the rest of the things, a lot of people have turned off and then been a bit underwhelmed when 40k maybe only gets one or two models and a book shown off or something, even if it is in line with the other things that are being previewed. It's perhaps kind of understandable that the focus shifts away from 40k for a bit, seeing as that we've been building up to the new edition's launch over the past few months, though I'm sure we'll cycle back in time soon enough. Even with this specifically being branded not Warhammer 40k though, it still could be interesting enough from the Horus Heresy things. I think there's a very high chance that we get to see some more plastic Serastus Knights. We've already seen, I think it was the Acheron's kit leaked on eBay, and now we've got the Forge World datasheets for those as well, and they're looking really quite strong indeed, and kind of interesting within the Imperial Knights army when they've been overshadowed for quite a while. I'm also kind of interested by that mystery Horus Heresy army release that they're doing at some point later in the year. If they do start to tease or lift the lid on that, then it could be pretty interesting. I think they do have plenty of armies that they could go down the route of, but in particular, if it was, say, Plastic Custodies or Sisters of Silence realised in a big way, I feel like that, again, would be very relevant to Warhammer 40k, if, say, you had things like Plastic Caladius Tanks or Telemann Dreadnoughts on the go. Otherwise, after this, I guess the next things that we might be expecting for 40k would be Tyranids and Space Marine themed. I'd guess that at some point we're going to get some new starter sets to replace the Recruit Elite and Command sets, now that Leviathan has happened, and it'll be interesting to see how they interact with any combat patrol sets they come out with. We do know that the Space Marines and the Tyranids both have new ones. Beyond that, it's going to be that second wave that they're teasing with this Ogrim campaign, so I guess we won't be finding out anything before the 10th of July for that. I have talked about what I'd expect for both factions in previous videos, but for Marines, probably plenty of multi-part kits from Leviathan, full-fledged plastic kits for the Terminators, perhaps the same for the Ballistas Dreadnought as well. I'm sure we'll get a few more character releases, plus probably some more squads. Jump Pack Primaris, updated scouts, or perhaps an Assault Terminator squad, all seem like they're more likely than most, though Games Workshop's definitely got a lot of scope that they might surprise us. For the Tyranids, they have basically confirmed that we're going to be getting a Norn Emissary, plus likely things like Lictors, Biovores, Shrikes, and Hormagaunts. I feel like there's a very reasonable chance that we get all four of those as well as a whole bunch of cool supporting things, but maybe a bit more peripheral like the Necrons got. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on those three. Would you be tempted to pick up a free Infernus Marine? What do you make of Games Workshop's campaign? And what do you think is most likely to be coming on Saturday with the previews that aren't 40k related? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep up the regular 40k videos. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel quite a bit, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description. If you'd like to help keep these videos coming as regularly as they do, then any support is enormously appreciated. It is what allows me to make stuff quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. 
If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.